Hello everybody and welcome to today's tutorial on cash applications via the lockbox remittance processes 101. An understanding of the basic concepts and remittance processes through a lockbox. This session is intended to give you a quick overview of these processes and how it impacts an organization's cash applications processes. Granted, not all scenarios apply to every organization's methodology, but rather the intent here is to cover the basics. Remember, starting with a good understanding of the basics is always the best place to start. The learning objectives in this tutorial are pretty simple. We're going to talk about the lockbox remittance process concepts. Then we'll cover the four reasons why paper checks are not dead yet in lockbox processing with old technology and then moving on to a semi-automatic lockbox process. And then six questions to keep in mind when you're evaluating traditional lockbox services. And there's a lot to consider now that the technology has changed. And as I go through the presentation, you'll hear some of the pros and cons of, of using a lockbox in today's day and age. The concept of a remittance lockbox started long ago, and I can't tell you I, I when or where it started, but obviously there was a need uh, for and a purpose for this, not to mention that the um, banks were looking for ways to generate revenue and also to hold on to funds overnight, which can generate a lot of cash if everybody's using their lockbox system. So let me cover the uh, lockbox itself. It's nothing more than a post office box, actually at most cases at the post office. In some cases, the bigger banks will have a post office box within their facility, but it is nothing more than a postal lockbox. Same that you'd find in any of the mailboxes, et cetera, or in any of the other places that have postal boxes. Now, it acts as a place that's secure because it's under lock and keys. Postal system is pretty secure. Uh, and when the payments are received, they're picked up by the bank and taken over to the bank or in the case where the bank is, the lockbox itself. If someone goes down to the mailroom, picks it up and brings it upstairs. The purpose is originally sold as it's closed to the customer. So you're T mailing time across the country will be less. If you're in New York and your customers in, in uh, California, it makes sense to have the post office box as close to the customer as possible. When this was set up, mail time was a day, maybe two. If you had a weekend, that's four. Now, today, it could be five days and it's across the street from the post office. So things have changed, but the, the lock box is certainly not kind of compensating for that. So the payments are made directly into the bank. Not really, they're in the post office or in a lockbox system, and they're picked up by the bank and they're brought into the system. Now the banking system says, well, now that we have the, the checks, you don't have to fill out a deposit slip. We'll do that for you. So the payments are directly at the bank and then they start posting the checks. Originally, they posted the checks by hand. Then they moved from uh, hand posting to technology using uh, OCR and Keen, if you can call Keen technology. Then they said, we'll reduce the errors because our key punch people are fast and they will do it in, in less time and they know how to read a check. So they have less errors in the posting of the checks. The facilities know how to process a check, who better than the bank. And it's traceable because we'll, we'll copy those in, in the old days, they copied them with Xerox copy machines, then they moved to CD-ROMs, and, and now they've moved it to the internet. So the traceability is there. You can actually see a copy of the, the, the item. And today, they don't even return them. But that we're going to stick with what most banks still do, and that is they, they make a copy of it and they put it either on a disk or in a drive, that you, a shared drive on the cloud that you can see and they charge you for the storage and the input of that data. 
and they provide additional services and those could be anything from keying in the remittance advice to copying the remittance advice for the their customer to key it in themselves into their system. There are very few interfaces today that does an end-to-end -end remittance uh, of a check into your ERP or ERP systems. The purpose, again, the benefits were there was shorter mailing time, not true today. There was a higher level of control and security. Uh, if it's going through the postal system, I would say that that's probably the least secure these days. A lot of mail theft, uh, uh, not to mention the fact that the uh, security from the customer to the postal system to the bank is indirect handoffs that something could go wrong. The open invoices are cleared faster, not so, maybe cleared by the bank and the money's available to them, but it's not going to be faster for the person that's actually going to receive the remittance advice and the uh, copy or the information that was on the check. Uh, they code it with the uh, uh, MICA, MECA, MECA coding system, so it's readable to the bank. And again, that benefits the bank. It should benefit you if you know who the person that's remitting the check is from. And an overnight clearing by the banks. That's true, but you don't get the use of funds overnight. And then there's audit controls and compliance. So they can go back and show you where they, when they received the check, who they received the check from. And of course, if the check should get returned for any reason, uh, they uh, are able to reverse the transaction and provide you with a little more data. There's audit controls and compliance issues that have to be dealt with both on the bank side and on uh, the receiving entity side. Unfortunately, the postal system doesn't have any controls, although it's today more so than ever, uh, there is the ability that the postal systems can tell you that a envelope was received, but not what was in that envelope. Uh, and then of course, matching, scanning, formatting the details of the company's cash applications process. That's all a benefit. And all those services are offered by the bank. However, I will state that most bank branded lockbox solutions, the technical piece of it, is purchased from somebody else, just like it, you could purchase it from those vendors as well. One of the things that I have seen is once they purchase something at a bank, they live with it until they can no longer uh, find it beneficial to them. So you may be dealing with a bank that's still doing OCR technology, uh, uh, keystroking uh, the information in and charging you by the click. Uh, so you should really do a lockbox tour if you want to see if there is still a purpose and benefit and this should be a good checklist for you to, to do just that.